Selecting individual columns. In the last lesson, we learned about the select statement. We learned how to select all columns in a table by using select star. But what if you only want to see some of the columns? We'll learn how to do that in this lesson. So why would you only want to see some of the columns? Maybe there are a lot of columns and you don't care about some of them. Or maybe you're writing part of an application and you don't need all of the columns. Or maybe you're writing a script for whatever reason and only need certain columns for that script. The truth is, it's much better code to actually specify the columns you want to select instead of using select star. Select star is great for development investigation or to easily find out what columns are in a table. But in most cases, you're going to want to select certain columns. This is to make your code easy to read and write and improve performance. So how do you do this? Let's learn how. So we're back in SQL Developer with our query open. Let's use the select star from employee table again. Let's run it to see what's shown. We can see a few columns here across the top. Now, let's say we only wanted to see a few columns, employee ID, first name, and last name. How can we do this? So we go back up to our query, and instead of typing in the asterisk character, we type the name of our columns, and each of them will be separated by a comma. So we start with select, and then type in employee underscore ID because that's the name of our column. Now with column names, it's also not case sensitive. You can use uppercase, lowercase, or that MSN messenger split case style will all work. I prefer to use lowercase for column names, just to differentiate it from the SQL keywords. Also, you might've noticed that SQL developer has an autocomplete or that menu that pops up after a few seconds. You can also press control space to have the menu appear and then select from the list the value that you want. In this case, I'm going to use the employee ID. After the first column, enter a comma and then a space and then the next column. You don't need the space between the comma and the column name, but it just helps to make it easy to read. We'll keep doing this until all of our columns that we need are there. Employee ID, first name and last name. Make sure there is no comma at the end of this list. The comma is only used to separate the columns in the middle here. If you put a comma there, you'll get an error like this. If you remove the comma and run the query, you'll get a result that looks like this. It's the same rows that are shown in the earlier query, but different columns. We only see the ones that we entered in that select part of our query. Now what if we want to see the department ID as well, but not the first name? We can remove the first name by selecting it and the comma and deleting it from our query. And then adding in department ID. We can then run our query. You can see the results include the employee ID, last name, and the new department ID. It doesn't show the first name. You might notice that the order the columns are mentioned is the order that they appear in the results. For example, we put our employee ID first, and that comes first here. Department ID is at the end, and that's shown at the end of the results. You can adjust your query if you want the columns in a different order. If we want the department ID to come second before last name, we can put department ID in the middle and then last name. If we run that query, we'll see the column order reflected, but the data remains the same. Now let's try this on a different table, but this time we're not going to remove the first query. So at the end of your query, after the semicolon, press enter a couple of times. Now we're going to select from the department table. So we start off with select, and then we're going to select the department ID column, then a comma and then space and then department name. then a new line, and then from, and then department, and then our semicolon. 
Notice that all of our columns have underscores in them. This is because column names can't have spaces, and we've used underscores to make it easier to read. Now, click anywhere inside your query here, and click on the Run Statement command. This will run just our new query here that we've selected, and show us the results. So that's how you can specify the columns that you want to see in your query. Next, we'll look at restricting what rows are shown in your results, because sometimes you don't want to see every record.